Many people think that there wasn't any scientific progress in the Middle Ages because the Christian church suppressed science. We saw last time that there was a lot of scientific progress. But did the church try to suppress science? One of the real old corkers of a myth that we get is that you had wonderful science in the ancient world. You had pagan Aristotle, pagan Ptolemy, pagan Pythagoras, seeing far into the beyond. And then the church came with them and they put the clappers on it all. And right through 1500 years of the Dark Ages, if anybody showed any interest in science, they were burned at the stake. And then the Renaissance came. And then they're all released and it's suddenly let out. This again is pure, absolute rubbish. Didn't the church forbid dissection? Well, that is very interesting that the church, in fact, didn't try to stop human dissection. Almost all societies have had a taboo against cutting up dead bodies, especially the ancient Greeks, the Romans, and the Islamic world. And in fact, ancient Greek doctors were unable to dissect human beings. They had to make do with dissecting animals like pigs and Barbary apes. And that meant that they made mistakes. And it wasn't until 14th century Italy that human dissection really started and became an essential part of medical education and then gradually the mistakes that the ancient Greeks had made were uncovered. It's actually remarkable that the Christian church didn't try to stop this happening simply given that every other culture had had a taboo against this but in fact it hadn't and it's likely that human dissections began with legal autopsies and some of those we know were actually ordered by the church by the Pope directly. The Venerable Bede, I always call him England's first astronomer. The Venerable Bede died in 735 AD. He was a monk of the, Arbit, of the, the monastic community of Jarrow in the northeast. He taught how to calculate the calendar. He taught the idea of the Earth as a sphere, the universe as a series of classical spheres. He taught classical astronomy in Jarrow, up in the northeast of England, only 700 years after the crucifixion. Nobody suppressed him. His books and his writings came to be widespread across Europe, and his method of calculating the calendar was used more or less until better data was available in the 16th and 17th centuries. Wasn't there a pope who excommunicated Halley's Comet? Well, no, no pope has excommunicated Halley's Comet, although there is a a story that this happened during the 15th century is a story which results from a conflation of sources. It would of course be an extremely silly thing for a Pope to do and thankfully it never happened. Likewise there's still a very popular belief that the church tried to ban the number zero. Exactly why they would choose to do this is usually not explained but again that's simply a myth. When did the great universities of medieval Europe, Bologna, Paris, Oxford, Salamanca, Prague, and many others. Why did they teach astronomy, anatomy, comparative medicine, even dissect human bodies, calculating the motions of the heavens, and then hold extraordinary debates upon such subjects as could God have created an infinite universe had he chosen to do so? Now, one man who came out with that hair in Oxford was Thomas Bradford in 1326. He actually suggested this. If God is infinitely powerful, could he not have created an infinite universe and perhaps even an infinity of universes? A bit like string theory. I'll bet you say, oh, he got into trouble, didn't he? Yes, he did, actually. He became Archbishop of Canterbury. <laughs> The Christian Church didn't suppress science in the Middle Ages. This is a dishonest claim, a claim that's made in bad faith about the conflict between science and faith. On the contrary, the Church was one of the main driving forces of scientific inquiry at that time. But what about people like Copernicus? The Church persecuted him, didn't it? We'll look at this next time.